All right. So I took a brief hiatus from the plugin to let some things after 4.17 go and see if I had any additional bugs show up. And it's been pretty good. I have a couple things with stereo layers I need to look into. Let me up screen percentage a little bit. But I got the um, interactables working how I wanted them to. So I figured I'd have a uh, video where I went over the interactables and some of the options on them. I'm not going over the buttons because I've already gone over them multiple times and they're rather simple. But I do want to go over the new levers and the dials that are at C++ components now. And then I wanted to show a use case for them, which would be this. Which is actually going to help here in this video. Let me flip the preview screen around. I have this um, preview window here for, you know, this can't, I'm going to make it a little smaller. For this camera is actually a dial that I've repurposed so that I can use it here. And it's uh, drawing to a render target from the Scene Capture 2D and it's using 4.17's new spectator screen features. So right now you have the normal spectator screen, but if I take the camera and I hit the button on it, oops, I accidentally hit it again, and I hit the button again, um, now you are going from the point of the camera, and I am just walking, moving the camera around, looking at stuff. I can dual wield it and get better views and smoother movement with it. It might be a little jittery right now because I'm streaming, running two views and a high uh, screen percentage at the same time while the editor is running. But you get the basics. And then I have it so that I can flip that window all the way around and I can see myself and the image mirrors over. Oh, my hands are in the wrong size. My, the image mirrors over when I do that so that I have... Um, it correctly here. So as soon as I get this uh, window past 180 degrees, it mirrors it, which is just using the dial levers, I mean the dial indicators, uh, current angle to decide that. So I figured I would use this camera to help me record this video. So we'll get to. Right there, huh? So if I'm over here, you can see it. Uh, I'll swing around a little bit more. Hey! Alright, so. Actually, you know what? Let's get over here. Yeah, I'll just turn it off for now. Okay. So first, the dial indicators. There's quite a few different types of dials. There's a standard dial. It's just a dial. You just turn it back and forth. And I have all these dials set up so that in the counterclockwise direction, it only goes 45 degrees and it stops. It won't let you go any farther. But in the clockwise direction, it's got a full 180 degrees of rotation. So this is just a standard dial. Just does one to one with your hand rotation. Just works like that, nothing special. Over here is a dial angle snap 10, which every 10 increments of rotation, it'll snap to that. And um, it's only on release for this one. So see where I let go, it snaps a little bit. It's snapping to the closest increment of 10. So that way you can do like, you know, dots and stuff. Dial angle snap 10 and 10 is it's got that 10 snap, but the um, snap threshold is also set to 10. Now what the snap threshold does is if the angle that you've turned it from the last snap point is within the snap threshold, it doesn't move. So instead of getting this smooth movement between, it would, it would be locked in place until out of that threshold and then be smooth until the next threshold. Since I have the snap increments and the snap threshold to the same value, it's just like it's ticking. So it's just ticking between 10 every time. If I set to twenty, if I set to forty-five, it go bam to forty-five, and then bam to ninety, for, uh, forty-five, ninety, forty-five, ninety, all the way around. So there's three different types of dials. For the ones that have um, snap angles, there's an event that fires when you hit a snap angle. So every time you hit, you know, ten on this, it'd fire an event, and then when you let go, it'd snap back. And 
stay at the new position. Otherwise, you would just directly read out the current angle while it's gripped and decide what you want to do with it. For levers, we have lever set in stay mode, which is where you let go of it. It just stays in place. And then you'll throw an event when it hits the target rotation that you want. And if you have it set to automatic re automatically release that target, it'll hit that target rotation, it'll drop it, and it'll do whatever. So lever return to zero. When you let go, it returns back to its zero point. And lever lerp to max. When you let go, it lerps to the max point for itself. And all of these... Um, all of these components are set up as actual components. They're not done like most uh, VR interactables where they're um, an actor or there are components attached to an actor with logic in the actor. These are all components unto themselves. They're all part of one actor right here, actually. These are all components on some little scene actor I have here. So what that means is that you could take this dial, you could rotate it any which way, any scale, however you want to do it, in um, local space on something and it'll remember that when it boots up and everything will just work like magic with it you don't have to worry about anything you don't have to change any of the logic based off of where it is in the world everything is relative to it and i put a lot of painstaking work into getting that working because i feel it's uh very important that everything just works no matter what you're doing with it for instance i don't like hover mode let me get rid of that Okay, for instance, if I took this uh, video camera and I attached one of these levers to it and the lever is rotated all up backwards and stuff, it would just work no matter how, what I was doing with the camera. I thought that was important to have just inclusive components that did the work for you. The uh, spectator screen features for 4.17 have the normal scene capture component 2D problems where the rendered texture is significantly darker than expected. If you just go into the scene texture target 2D uh, render target and set the target gamma to about two, it'll work correctly. And then on this camera, since I'm mirroring it to the surface here, it'll, you'll need to divide the um, brightness of the material, the texture when you make the material by two then to bring it back into line. It's in the world, it'll look correctly, but on the screen, it'll be uh, half as bright as it's supposed to be. That's why you have to set the target gamma to 2. Anyways, this camera is pretty cool. So I have a camera. I can uh, record stuff. I, it's set to scaling, but if it wasn't scaling, it'd be better. You can smoothly record stuff with 2D, follow stuff along. You could attach it to a um, Vive tracker have someone else record you you could flip the screen around so you can see yourself selfie mode into a nice position and turn it on and get what you want for uh, location and hey that works so this is a new sample um, actor I've added in and is up as of today you can look at it and see how I implemented it it's uh, pretty easy and it's pretty fun I've got the plugin stable now, and um, on 4.17, I know what I need to work on for it, so I'm going to get back to work, and I don't know. Talk to you guys later.